Hi, I'm Mark Patey, and we're really excited to show you our new Romeo Tug. We picked the Epic aircraft to show you how well it loads and unloads for a very specific purpose. It's easy to load and unload a lightweight aircraft. It's really easy to unload and load a jet because jet nose wheels are very light until you get a bunch of people in the airplane, then it gets heavy. So those are easy to get underneath, even though you've seen a lot of remote control tugs struggle, especially on a painted floor. The heaviest nose wheel aircraft we could find is the Epic, LT, and the Pilatus. They are heavy. We chose this airplane also because it has a really wide tire and we wanted to show you that we capture a pretty fat tire. So um, a few things about our tug. One is that it's quiet. As you cruise around, it's not screaming, it's not yelling. You don't have to try to talk over it. If someone says, hey, watch out for the wingtip on the airplane, you'll hear them instead of someone screaming, hey, watch your wingtip, and you crash an airplane. So it's whisper silent. Um, that's a nice safety feature. Another thing that people have struggled with remote control tugs is you can't or don't want to use them on a painted floor because um, they have a skidding type of a system and it just rips the floor apart. And if it hasn't yet, eventually it does. It just has to pick up a little piece of gravel. And when it skids on the floor, there goes your paint. And if you're like me and you've spent a lot of money on the painted floor, it's because you cared about it. If you don't have a painted floor, it doesn't matter. But for us, we thought it was important that the aircraft can turn left and right all day long, even with the weight of the aircraft, and not damage your floor. So all we need to do to load it and unload it, I'm going to leave it in the unlocked position so I can drive underneath the aircraft, load it, and drive right back out, unloaded. Now, you don't have to go fast like that. If you don't want to, you can creep under it, go a little slower like that. Now, I want to show you, I'm going to drive back out from here. This is a painted floor, so it's really slippery. A lot of tugs can't even get underneath an aircraft, especially something with a nose wheel this heavy. Now, this tug may struggle sometime as well, and I'll tell you how that'll happen. You have a nice, glossy, painted floor, and it's dusty, and you just haven't cleaned it lately, and you're just not in the mood to clean it, and that dust is on there. And so, as you pull underneath, the tires will want to peel out, if I push this throttle, I can tell it's going to go under there, but I'd show you if it wouldn't go under, uh, it'll just drive under, you see that. But if it wouldn't, and you pulled up and it started just peeling out, and the weight transfer onto the traction tire still wasn't enough, we actually designed this spot right here by design. There's a massive heavy steel plate under there you can't damage, so that you can come up underneath, and if you need to, help it drive underneath on that slippery floor, so you don't have to just peel out. It's designed for the kick if you need to give it a kick. But we would just say, put your foot under there and give it an assistance, just like that. And it just takes a little bit of pressure. And because this is a one-handed control for throttle forward and reverse, if you need to, you can grab the prop and stabilize yourself to give it a push. So I can lock and unlock the tug with just one switch right here. I can see that it's locked. So I can go ahead and move the aircraft. Now, I wanna show you a couple neat options. This tug has a Lazy Susan option, but we want it to be able to lock or unlock. So right now you can see I'm steering the nose wheel of that aircraft where I want it to go, and I can keep an eye on my turn limits. On the Epic, if you hit a turn limit, it has a really big stop that'll stop you. Some aircraft it can damage if you go too far. So I have the option on this tug to simply flip a switch and unlock a pivot. We'll get on, there we go. And now, See, I can move the tug all the way around with the tire the way it is. If I want to lock that Lazy Susan, I can drop a pin. I'm going to rotate the tug. When it's perfectly lined up, it locked in automatically, and now I'm controlling the position of that wheel. Again, I can unlock it, rotate on a Lazy Susan. Holy cow, is that cool? Come all the way back around. There's the Lazy Susan. I can maneuver this airplane anywhere I want to, drive in all kinds of directions. I can drop the pin and watch. Now it's locked in the straight load unload position and I can flip my switch and drive out from underneath the aircraft just like that. So there's no climbing underneath, no shoving a bolt through your Lazy Susan to get it to lock. The biggest challenge with Lazy Susans is loading unloading. They try to rotate and spin around on you. It causes more grief than they're even worth. Most aircraft and most owners that think they need a Lazy Susan actually don't. But for some of you that really feel like you need one, we've built the best, most sophisticated, strongest Lazy Susan on the planet. That's our firm belief, and we think you'll find that to be true. 
So I'm going to load this up. We're going to move this big, heavy bad boy out of this hangar, right through that nasty crack and out on the ramp and let you see it go. Now this tug also has auto braking. If I've got the throttle set at a speed I like, you noticed as we came down the ramp, the plane didn't start pushing the tug away. The tug automatically used our best tug, smart tug technology, put the, re the tug in reverse to slow down the aircraft. I didn't have to use the controls or stick to slow down the airplane. It did it on its own. Now another thing you'll see is with our tug, and it's a big safety feature, if I just let go of the stick, it brings the aircraft to a nice smooth stop on its own because we put a computer between the receiver for the remote control and the motors and the computer's programmed to not accelerate or decelerate too fast, which could do several things. One, if on other tugs you let go of the trigger, it can come to a quick stop, the airplane jumps out of the tug and it's on its own ramp, run down the ramp. Hopefully you're on a flat ramp. Um, if you had a wheel pant, it can jump out and crack your wheel pant. That's a challenge as well. So you gotta make sure they're really secure. Our tug, we said, look, we want things to be secure, but let's make a really tall, lazy Susan. Let's make it lock in real solid. And then let's put software in there that's smart enough to know that if you just push the throttle all the way, it doesn't want you to wreck the nose gear of the aircraft. It wants to ramp up slowly. And if I'm just going this direction and I go from speed at one direction and just go full throttle the other direction, it slows down nice and smooth and then gradually accelerates up the other way. It gives us a very distinct advantage. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this thing and just show you what happens when you can just go sideways with a tug. There's our Lazy Susan. Gives me a lot of flexibility on moving. Now if I want the Lazy Susan to lock, I'm going to just flip the switch when it gets straight. Now I want to point something out here. That Lazy Susan, once it got turned, and this happens a lot with TBMs, and um, even more than the Epic, because the nose fork is forward a little bit. The more forward it is, once that wheel turns, it doesn't want to straighten out for you. And so the fact that we can lock our Lazy Susan and drop a pin, there I've got it locked, I can straighten the nose wheel out, and then I can load and unload the aircraft with the nose wheel straight, not leaning and turned all the way to the left or all the way to the right. And so that's why we think it's so important to be able to lock and unlock and reposition. Now for a lot of people, they don't need the Lazy Susan. We can make some really steep, sharp turns just like that. I'm not even close to the bump stop steer limit. But again, if I just want to go crazy with it, I can just say, hey, disconnect that Lazy Susan and drive. I'm going to come back. I'm going to drop the pin. It's going to find center. And now it's locked and I have control of the nose wheel again. And again, I let go. No harsh stopping or stopping. Um, it makes a nice smooth transition. I hope this is helpful for you. We're real proud of our software, our TugSmart technology. This is not a remote control car set up to pull an airplane. This is a very smart, high-tech piece of aviation equipment to handle your aircraft smarter than anything else out there. Okay, a couple of other things I wanna show you real quick is adjustability. These slides can move in and out for a wider or narrower tire. For the most part, you'll probably leave those and use it for quite a few different airplanes. But if you need to change it for a skinnier tire or a tailwheel airplane, you can simply do that. And we've given the ability to loosen this by hand, change these two pins. You just take it, slide it to the next hole, and this whole thing closes up. So we can go from a really small tire, a tailwheel airplane, to something as big as what's on this big Epic LT over here without having any tools, without having to take any time, but just simply undoing that by hand, putting it in the next hole, putting it, uh, and you're done. So really easy to adjust and make work on any aircraft.